Hey everybody, welcome to the channel. In this video, we're talking rattlesnakes and specifically what to do if you're bitten by a rattlesnake. Now, before we get into this, I got all my information from a, an organization called the Asclepius Snake Bite Foundation, and they dedicate all of their time and their research to treating snake bites, specifically venomous snake bites across the whole world, um, and also educating people on what to do if you're bitten by a venomous snake. So all this information that I'm giving to you guys today is kind of like the nutshell of what I learned from them, but I'll be including a link to their website in the comment section below and also in the description of this video. I really encourage you to read into what they do. Um, it's, it's, it, it's really been the only source that I could find on the whole internet that could really get a deep dive on what do you do if you get bit by a rattlesnake because there's a lot of false information out there that it was actually is really detrimental to a person if they get bit by a rattlesnake. So I want people to be educated on what to really actually do if you're bitten. So we're gonna be covering three different things in this video. The first is what not to do if you're bitten by a rattlesnake. And I'm gonna explain later on why I think that's actually more important than what to do if you're bitten by a rattlesnake. The second thing is what to do if you get bit by a rattlesnake. And then the third thing, I'm gonna tell you guys a short story about a friend of mine who was out with a group of people last year in 2022, and they were backpacking about five miles away from uh, the nearest trailhead. And they had somebody get bit by a rattlesnake and then what they did to handle that situation and save that kid's life. It's a really, really good story and I think it's gonna be really good information for you guys as well. All right, here we go. What not to do if you get bit by a rattlesnake. Number one, do not cut the wound to try to release the venom. That does not work. That's a myth, folks. All that ends up doing is number one, it causes more damage to whatever limb that you got bit on. And it also has the potential of shoving that venom even further into your bloodstream. It does not release the venom. It's a myth. Don't do it. Number two, don't make a tourniquet. Again, this is another myth. I, I even thought that a tourniquet was something that you're supposed to do, but it's not guys. The, what, let, so let's give you an example. Let's say I get bit right here in my hand, right? If I do a tourniquet, right um, right above the bite. The only thing that's almost gonna guarantee that's gonna happen is I will have to get this arm amputated. Um, the, the amount that the tourniquet is going to slow the venom is incredibly, incredibly small to the point where it's insignificant. Don't take pain relievers, Advil, ibuprofen, um, whatever else you might take out there for pain relief. Those have an adverse reaction to a snake's venom. The fourth thing, do not use any sort of snake bite kit suction contraption that's out there. There's a lot of these snake bite kits out there that have this suction device on them that claim that it sucks the venom out. Guys, that is the last myth that I am encouraging you guys not to believe. It does not work. In fact, what it could do is it could actually close up the snake bite wound even further, preventing the, the venom from leaving your body. Um, this is, there's some studies that the Asclepius Snake Bite Foundation did on this, and you can read into it in, in, in more depth, but they never found that these suction devices ever worked. So guys, don't use it. Okay, so what do you do if you get bit by a rattlesnake? First thing I wanna point out, folks, is that the only treatment that is gonna help you if you get bit by any venomous snake is anti-venom. And anti-venom is it has to be refrigerated. It's not a commercial thing that you can go buy at a CVS or a Walmart. Um, it's so you can't, you know, take it with you out into the back country or, or really anywhere. And, and from my research, I haven't been able to find any place that you could just buy anti-venom. So just know that, guys, that the only thing that's gonna help you is anti-venom. Okay, so then what do you do? The first thing you do is you wanna circle the place where you got bit, and then you wanna write down the time of also when that bite happened. The reason you wanna do that is because once you get to paramedics, they're gonna be able to see exactly where that snake bite was, and they're gonna know the time also, um, just because you might be a little loopy at that point once you get to the hospital, and so you, you don't have to remember what time exactly that you got bit. It's gonna help the paramedics know how much uh, vials of anti-venom to give you, and et cetera, et cetera. So now the second thing you wanna do is you just wanna let the bite bleed freely. So for instance, on my hand, I'm just gonna let it sit out here like this. I'm gonna let the blood naturally come out. I might take some water. I might pour some water over it. Um, the studies have shown that just letting the wound bleed freely could actually help release more venom than, than not um, if you were to bandage it up or something of that nature. The next thing, remove all rings, watches, any sort of jewelry on the limb that could prevent 
your, your, that limb from naturally swelling because it will swell. So for instance, let's say I get bit on this hand, I'm wearing my wedding ring. Now I, I happen to wear rubber rings, so it's not really a real ring. Well, it's a real ring, but it's rubber. Um, I, I do, I, I wear that for this kind of the same, this exact reason. Um, but if this was a, if this was a gold ring or a metal ring, you're going to want to remove that so that that hand, this finger can naturally swell. Otherwise you're going to have the possibility of having to amputate that finger because they're not going to be able to get the ring or the watch or whatever off of that limb. The fourth thing, if you have cell phone service, you want to call 911, you want to tell them that you got bit by a rattlesnake and that you need them to tell you where the closest hospital is that has anti-venom. And if possible, tell them where your trailhead is or where your car is parked and maybe have them come pick you up and take you to the hospital. Um, you might also be able just to drive yourself there or have a friend take you. Um, the idea is just to get to the hospital as quick as, as you can. Okay, so what if you're 5, 10, 15 miles into the backcountry and you don't have cell phone service? Well, what you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna, after you've done everything that I previously stated, you're gonna wanna look at your maps, you're gonna wanna plot the quickest route out of from wherever you're at, maybe take a small pack with some water, and you're gonna wanna start hightailing it out of there. Now, I know that might seem like crazy, like oh, hiking with a rattlesnake bite, but the reality is, folks, the only person that's gonna save you when you're out there, especially if you're out there alone, is you. And even though there's a, a really good chance that you're not gonna die from the rattlesnake bite, you do need to get to the hospital as soon as possible. And the best thing that you can do in, in that situation is, is hike out of there. Now, this brings up a really good point on why I always carry with me a satellite GPS. Now, I happen to have the the Garmin InReach Mini. This allows me to text uh, pretty much anyone from anywhere that I'm at but it also has a really powerful feature called the SOS button. Um, the SOS button, I'm gonna read this out to you. If I were to press this, it would contact the International Emergency Response Coordination Center. So for instance, let's say I'm out there 10 miles and I got bit and I start hiking out, but I, my, my breathing becomes really hard um, and I, like I'm, I'm starting to like, not able to really have good coordination. Um, I'd probably actually wait before that happened. I'd probably just listen to my gut. If I felt like I couldn't get to wherever I needed to quick enough, I would press the SOS button. Once you tell them that you have a rattlesnake bite, they would send a helicopter to your location and it could very well save your life. Now, this actually brings me to the short story I wanted to quickly share with you. Uh, a friend of mine had to press this SOS button because a, somebody in their camp got bit by a rattlesnake and the SOS more than likely saved that kid's life. I'm gonna include a link to the story, uh, the full story in the comment section below and in the description of this video. I really encourage you to check that out. I'm only gonna briefly go over it here, but basically what happened, a, a friend of mine, he's a, a fly fisherman and fly guide. He was out in the Sequoia National Forest backpacking with a group of friends and this young guy comes running into their camp one night and says, my brother got bit by a rattlesnake. And mind you, they're about five miles from the, tra from a, the nearest trailhead and then probably a, you know, a th at least a two hour, three hour drive to the closest hospital. Immediately, Tim just pressed the SOS button right away because he just knew there's there no way they're gonna be able to get this kid out of there in time. Um, so he just immediately pressed the SOS button, which was just really good on him for just immediately knowing that that was going to be the best option. He didn't hesitate. Meanwhile, the rest of the group went to the, this kid's camp, which is about a mile and a half further back from where their camp was. Long story short, this helicopter comes in 90 minutes later, gets the kid out. There's this whole thing of this, this group of people had to take this kid, though, across this, ri uh, this river to where this helicopter was able to land because they were in this really steep canyon. It's just a miraculous effort from all of these people and they saved that kid's life. Um, it took 22 vials of anti-venom, if I'm not mistaken, to get the venom out of this kid's body, um, but the kid made a full recovery and he's completely fine. I just wanna throw out some quick facts to you guys because when I'm making this video, I, I'm making this video to alleviate fear of rattlesnakes. I don't want to invoke any more fear of these creatures because the, the reality is, folks, these things, they're way more afraid of us than we are of them, even though I know some of us are really scared of snakes. Indiana Jones. But check this out. According to USDA.gov, 8,000 people every year in the United States get bit by a rattlesnake. And anywhere between, I gotta look at my stats here, anywhere between 10 to 15 of those bites result in death. So to break that down, one in 600 rattlesnake bites 
do result in death. And a majority of those folks is because a, the person did not do the right things when they got bit by the rattlesnake. And also to give even more perspective, National Geographic says that the chances of even getting bit by a rattlesnake is one in 38, almost 38,000. Now to put that into even more perspective, the chances of you dying in a car accident is one in 112. So the reality is that it's more dangerous for you guys to go into your car right now and drive to the grocery store than it is for you to go out into the wilderness and possibly get bit and die from a rattlesnake. It's very, very rare. And I know guys, I know that's a, that can be a broad generalization. I know you could throw stuff like, well, if you're not experienced and you don't know what you're doing out in the backcountry, then that could be even more dangerous, of course. Well, that's also why I'm making this video. So guys, I hope that this was helpful for you. I hope you learned something. I hope you were encouraged. And also, don't be afraid of rattlesnakes. It's not only a rare, such a rare occurrence. They're not out to get you. You're more than equipped to take care of a situation like this. If this were to ever happen, and the chances of this ever happening are so, so rare. Until next time, folks, I'll catch you in another fishing adventure. I got all my stuff here ready to go. We're gonna have a really good episode coming up next. I'll see you in that one. Peace.